Hey team, it's Michelle Hemley here and welcome to another episode of Ask Team Hemley TV. Today I'm extremely excited because we're only two weeks away from our inaugural Choose Your Own Adventure Noosa Week. So how this works is we have 24 participants booked in in two weeks time for a week up at Noosa of training and different activities. So we have swimming in the ocean, we have board training, we have surf life saving stuff, we have running, we have triathlon, we have strength training, we have yoga, nutrition workshops, um, professional surf iron woman Harriet Brown's coming to do a workshop for us which is fantastic. So we are so excited and we hope if you're coming along that you are too. If you aren't coming along this year don't worry we will hold it every year so keep the second week of the September school holidays free for our 2007 edition. So I thought I'd take this opportunity leading into Noosa and the fact that a lot of people are travelling at the moment with sporting equipment to address a question I am asked all the time, which is about travelling with your different pieces of sporting equipment. So whether that's your surfboard or your golf clubs or your bike or your nipper board, any of those things, um, you know, you just need to know the tricks and the ins and outs of if you're travelling on a plane or a train or anything um, so that you can actually get to your destination, have it ready to go and, you know, importantly have the equipment in one piece and also importantly not having it cost you an arm and a leg. So I just thought I'd give you a few little tips because you're actually speaking to someone who uh, would have been four or five years ago I was on a plane constantly several times a month, often with my bike. I was still competing in triathlon quite frequently in those days. Um, I was also living in Queensland. I was actually living in Noosa, <laughs> hence why we picked Noosa for our first adventure of this kind in a few weeks. So I was living in Noosa. Um, Dale, my now husband, was down here in Victoria. I'm obviously from Perth, um, so there was a lot of travel happening constantly. So I did really learn to be very efficient with my packing um, of my sporting equipment and also my normal gear um, for traveling. So I just wanted to share a few tips with you if this is the first time you're traveling with such pieces of equipment and you're wondering how it all works. So my number one tip to you is to be organized and know what you're actually booking in for when you book your flights. So shop around on all of the different major airlines and see what they have to offer. So for instance, know with Jetstar, when you book, you normally have to book your 20 kilos of luggage on top of your fare, and then you can purchase extra kilos on top of that as well. That is generally one piece. Um, some of the other airlines, so for instance, Virgin and Qantas, who we're traveling with for this trip, they actually include 23 kilos of luggage and one piece of luggage up to 23 kilos as part of your additional as part of your airfare and you can purchase any additional weight on top of that as well. So it's good to know that before you start because then you can actually make these things work for you. So for instance, the 20 kilos or the 23 kilos, that is what you can actually check in. That doesn't include your carry-on. Now, check the carry-on restrictions and weight as well. I have this awesome, massive engine backpack filled to the brim. It is about 7 kilos, which is the weight they will let you take on board for Jetstar. And it's actually amazing what you can cram in there if you need to. The amount of times I've checked in my one piece of luggage of 20 to 23 kilos purely as my bike box. So that's my bike all packed and I've thrown in additional bigger items in there like shoes and toiletry bags etc just to make up the extra weight so my bike alone in my bike bag weighs 18 kilos so I've got another few kilos of shoes and you know all manner of things that I can pop in there that won't take up space so often I will travel with my larger item being my sporting equipment um, make sure it's exactly the 20 or 23 kilos or whatever I'm allowed and then all of my clothes and day-to-day -day stuff go in my carry-on luggage. As well as that seven kilos for your official luggage, there's certain things you can get away with and this is someone who knows every trick in the book. So for instance, um, if I'm traveling with a book or a magazine and my iPad, I will just carry them separately and they always ask to carry your bag, to weigh your bag, but never those items. So one, they don't take up space um, in your bag and two, you're probably gaining a kilo or so there. Um, another thing you can do is actually make sure you're wearing all your heavy clothing when you board the flight. So if it's hot, you can strip off once you're in there, but 
Often I'm traveling to warm destinations, so the only larger pieces of clothing I will have, um, such as a pair of boots or sneakers, jeans, a jacket, a coat, scarves, I will wear on the plane. Um, Dale and I made a very interesting pair a few years ago at Munich Airport, I remember, because it was about 37 degrees, but we had very tight restrictions um, with Lusana Airlines flying from Germany back to England, and we were decked out in our coats and our jackets and our boots but um because they were the only ones we had with us on the trip so that was quite funny but just know that you can wear that through all the way in stations and then you can take it off on the plane so that's another way just to gain some extra space in your luggage if you do need to book a few extra kilograms of weight make sure you do it before you get to the airline most airlines you can actually book an extra one two three five kilos whatever you need online for 24 hours before the flight closes and that's relatively cheap it's generally anywhere between eight and fifteen dollars a kilo at the airport if they weigh your luggage and it is over you'll probably get charged anywhere between 25 and 30 dollars a kilo so that's something to be aware of know what your airline will allow you know what the strict restrictions are and plan ahead um, with your items, with your carry-on luggage, with anything you can wear on the plane, just to make the most of what you've got available to you. Another thing you can do is make the most of the people travelling with you. So a lot of people travel with a lot more than what they actually require for their trip. So for instance, if you're travelling with your partner um, or your child, do you both need a full suitcase or can you share one? So for instance, if you're heading up to Noosa with your child and they're taking a nipper board, can your child check on their nipper board as their 20 kilos of luggage? As I said, ring the airline, do all your research first and see if that's allowed. And then you can check on a shared suitcase together. That might be an option. So for instance, Dale and I are doing that. He's taking up his bike, I am not. We will share a bag to check on. We will check in his bike as the other piece of luggage because we get one piece of 23 kilo luggage each. And then we will take our carry on and that will be enough. So that was my second tip, um, you know, make the most of the people travelling with you and see if you can share the load and restrict everything out. The third tip is, and as I just touched on, you do not need everything you are going to take. Seriously have a look at all the items you're about to pack and check if you really need them. So, for example, a hairdryer. If you are staying in a resort or a hotel, they usually have a hairdryer in the room. You do not need to take up space and weight taking your own. Same with toiletries. If they're going to take up a huge amount of space and say you're going somewhere for two weeks, what I often do is I just leave all my toiletries at home and when I get to my destination, I'll go for a shop and I'll buy a small tube of toothpaste, my my shampoo and conditioner, my moisturiser, my sunscreen, all of those things, you don't necessarily need to take your own if it's going to be easy enough to get at your destination. Same with beach towels. I always see people take up a huge amount of space in their suitcases with beach towels. Again, if you're going to a resort or if you're competing in an event and they're going to give you a free towel as part of your competitor bag, you know, you probably don't need to take your own. So take a really close look at all of the things you are going to pack and you know, get rid of all the excess that you don't need because there's probably a fair amount of space and checked in luggage that you can uh, you know, get rid of. And the final thing you need to consider is make sure all of your different travel options cover, cover your luggage. So for instance, if you're traveling with a bike or a board and you've hired a car at the airport at the other end, make sure the car is big enough to be able to transport your bike or your surfboard or your golf clubs or whatever you're taking with you. So um, we've made that mistake before with the car companies, they've actually given us the wrong car. So you know, a couple of bikes won't fit in a little Mazda 2. So make sure you've booked an appropriate car to transport your gear. Um, also consider with taxis, you might need to book a maxi taxi rather than a normal taxi because it might not fit in there. Sometimes when you go to a place, especially regional centres, they'll only have a few maxi taxis and they have to be booked in advance or you'll be waiting a long time at the airport. And if you're catching trains or, or buses or public transport, make sure they can actually take your equipment with them um, or if there's any restrictions on how they need to be when they travel as well. So for instance, some of the Eurorails in Europe, they don't let you take a bike box 
with your bike in it, but they let you take your bike as normal and they have racks at the front. So yeah, I know that doesn't make sense, but that's been something I've been kicked off a train for, as I said, experienced it all. Um, and another thing is, you know, if you're going to train stations, do they have lifts? Do they have elevators? Is it going to be easy enough to travel around with all of your gear as you're trying to get to where you are? Or should you book a cab or a car in advance? So those are my tips for traveling with your sporting equipment. So make sure you know what you're booking and what your restrictions are and make it work for you. Um, use the people around you, share the load. Number three is honestly look at everything you are about to pack and see if you need it or if you can get it at the destination. And number four, consider all your other travel arrangements. So booking cars, cabs, public transport, and make sure it suits your knees. Needs, not knees. Um, make sure it suits your needs. If you are coming to Noosa with us in a few weeks, we look forward to seeing you. We're really excited about it. Um, otherwise, I hope you got some useful tips. And if you are about to head on a holiday, please make sure you do some activity. That's the best way to see the sights. And we'll see you next time. See you later.